Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. More Tiger today, and we're going to sort out the radio system. The stock transmitter on a 27 MHz tank is a pretty hopeless item. It will control the tank, but the quality is ropey at best, but it does have some advantages. Henglong also have a 2.4 GHz system, which is a far nicer set than the old 27 Meg, a far more solid feeling transmitter. It also uses a different box of tricks in the tank with a 2.4 GHz receiver built in. It is a bit of a problem though, as it isn't compatible with any common hobby level system, so you can't upgrade the transmitter, and you can't add any common RC bits, like servos and speed controllers. Ok, new radio time. It's been around quite a while, but it's still a nice low end radio. The Flysky 9X. If you shop around you can get one with an 8 channel receiver for around 50 quid. It's nowhere near as fancy as a good Spectrum or Futaba, but it's got it where it counts. The radio is a good size and actually fits adult hands, and has a nice selection of knobs and switches. It uses I think a JR compatible transmitter module, so you can use it with Orange Spectrum, FR Sky and other 2.5 gig systems. You can even get modules on other bands, like 433 MHz, if you really want long range. There's also a fairly chunky 8 channel receiver in the box, which for now will do us nicely. The transmitter module just slots into the recess in the back, connecting with a few pins. If you think you might want to change the module, you'll want to make sure your 9X comes with the antenna on the module. Some have the antenna on the main radio. They do look a lot nicer, but there's some coax connecting the antenna to the module, soldered at one end and glued at the other, which makes removing the module just about impossible without opening it up and desoldering. The sticks have removable caps with a grub screw in the end for length adjustment. If you tend to hold the radio with your thumbs on the end of the sticks, you can have them nice and short, but if like me you tend to pinch the sticks, you can set them up longer. Nice. The switches and pots all feel fairly solid from the outside, might need to do some rearranging to make them a bit more tank friendly. Ultimately it could do with more momentary controls for gun firing, uh, engine ignition and the machine gun. We'll need to power up the transmitter and see what it does. It comes with an 8 cell AA harness. You could pop in a load of cells or since it's on a connector replace it with a rechargeable. LiPos are a popular choice but I still prefer NiMis for transmitters. In particular any loops. These sparkly green ones are a few years old, but they still hold their full capacity. On the board is a JST connector with a 2.5mm pin pitch. The pack has the JR Spectrum connector, which won't fit, but it also has the servo type connector that Futaba use, which has a 2.54mm pitch. It won't be a perfect fit, but it'll do to get us going. All the spare wire just about fits in beside the battery, and the cover fits. Nice. Well, it powers up ok with the beep that anyone with a 9X rapidly grows to dislike. The LCD doesn't have a backlight, so it has almost original Game Boy type viewing issues. You either get a reflection, or there's not enough light to see the display. The user interface isn't brilliant, but at least it's fairly consistent. Hold menu to get to the menus, then menu to select stuff and save settings, and exit to back out and cancel. The pad on the left is just a menu up and down, and a plus minus to edit values. Ok, we need to bind the receiver. The bind plug goes into the bind port, and so we can see if it's working, a servo into channel 1. For power, a standard receiver pack can plug into the back port, or any of the other spare ones. Inside the receiver there's a blinking red LED, so I guess that means it's in bind mode. Now we need to hold the bind button on the transmitter module, while turning on the radio. The LED on the receiver is now solid, so I think that means it's bound. It won't start sending pulses to the servo until the power gets cycled. And that works. Nice. Ok, let's do a little bit of setting up. The standard servo signal should go between 1 and 2 milliseconds, or 1000 to 2000 microseconds, with 1500 being the centre. With the servo tester, we can see the centre is off by quite a bit, but that can get tweaked by the subtrims. Looks like the endpoints are off quite a bit too. Uh, most radios come up a little bit short just to be on the safe side, so it's not too bad. If we go into the endpoint menu and adjust, we should be able to get the system bang on. Or not. With the value set to 120, which is the maximum, we're still just a little bit short. But it's probably going to be close enough. 
Back to the hang along stuff now, and our first job is to get rid of that creaky stock radio. Right, this swap isn't quite plug and play. The Flysky radio has 8 channel outputs, 1 per channel. The hang along radio conversion only has 3 pins. So we need a widget that takes the 8 separate channels and squirts out the serial data the RX18 wants to see. There's a couple of boards available that will do the job, one from RC Tanks Australia for instance, but I found someone that's written a nice little Arduino program that will do the job nicely. I'll link some information in the description. Now since I didn't have a spare Arduino, I've lashed up something from my component stock. It's essentially a little processor, some connectors and a 5 volt regulator. Its job in life is exactly what we need to get started. 5 servo channels in and the Henglong special system out. It connects up in place of the stock 27 meg radio. And this is where the 27 meg tanks have a little more flexibility than the 2.5 gig ones. The 2.5 gig RX18 no longer has that interface that we can take control of. Ok, it's all roughly installed now. Before we do the final bits I'm going to test it just in case something isn't right. I've got it up on a box just in case it has a go at escaping. I modified the program a little bit just for some added safety. When you turn on the tank there's a green LED that blinks rapidly until all the controls are in the center. Just a little arming procedure to make it that bit safer. The engine start needs channel 5 to go from center to its minimum. It would normally be a switch but for some reason you can't assign a 3 position switch to a channel. With the engine running the right stick should control the throttles. Or not, that's the main gun. Forward and reverse is on the left stick. Looks like we need to rearrange the channels a bit, which is just a case of swapping the connectors around. Right, forward and reverse. Left and right. Machine gun by turning a knob all the way up. Turret rotation. Elevation. And the main gun. Nice, that's the basic set all working. We just need to do the final tidy up. I'm going to use some sticky bat velcro to mount the receiver up on the side which will make it easy to take it out for tinkering. The antenna can stick up on top for now with some servo tape. It's not ideal being right next to the speaker but it'll do. The upper hull can go back on with its two connectors. Slot the tongue in and press the back down. Slide the hoses on and we're ready to run. Finger in through the hatch and turn the switch on. We've got the blinky headlights so the RX-18 is running. Now we just need to turn the engine on. See if the machine gun flashes. It does. Turret rotation is backwards. OK, we hold menu. Select the spanner, choose reverse, scroll down to the rudder channel and toggle it. Menu to save, and we should be going the right way. Nice. Well, it seems to be doing what it's told now, so let's see how it rolls. The low speed control is a lot better. We've still only got the 32 speed steps, but there seems to be more control at the bottom end. Almost like the stock radio was skipping the first few. Not sure. It's miles better either way. I can think of ways of bypassing the RX-18's ESCs for even more control at low speed, but that's going to be another thing entirely. With the new transmitter there's loads we can do. There's a replacement firmware called OpenTX that I'll be looking into. It adds a lot of features we can make use of on the tank. There's a couple of hardware mods I want to do, first being a backlight. Then some more appropriate controls for the guns. The left stick needs to be self-centering too. Well, now we have a proper radio, there's fun things we can do on the tank. We could set it up so the turret rotation is proportional. No more left a bit, right a bit antics. Might be able to do the same with the elevation. Oh, the possibilities. However, that's not for today. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, you can share the feels with a like button. And of course, if you're not already, why not subscribe? It's free after all. Bye guys.